In a previous video about the interpretation of Revelation 12 and the sign on September 23rd, 2017, I showed a segment of Revelation 12 comparing it to the Joseph Smith translation of the Bible and what the prophet added, removed, and verses that he had reordered. Several people asked me where I got that comparison and if I had one for all of Revelation chapter 12. Well, I can do one better than that. I have it for the entire book of Revelation. And not only that, I have built out an entire study and reference guide for the book of Revelation. Before I tell you where you can download this guide for free, let me give you a little bit more information about it and some background. The core of this study guide is taken from the book of Revelation and then infusing it with the changes that Joseph Smith made. Where Joseph Smith removed items, I have crossed them out. And where Joseph added items, they're shown in red. You can also see where he has reordered verses. What I did was bought the Joseph Smith New Translation of the Bible, which you can get a copy on from, from Amazon, where on each page there is one column with the King James Version of the Bible, and on the other side the verses that Joseph Smith modified. The problem with this book is it only shows you the changes, not the entire text of the Bible. So what makes this guide special is there has the entire book of Revelation with only the changes that Joseph Smith made uh, to the book. Many prophets and apostles have talked about various meanings to different parts of the book of Revelation. I decided to add the best of these quotes from the most reliable sources, such as Joseph Smith. This includes commentary and sometimes interpretations and descriptions and even maps. I added scripture references, especially other places in the scriptures where the same event is discussed. I called out some areas where temple topics are also referenced. I added word definitions where appropriate and other references, as well as inspirational quotes. But I either put the reference right in the quote itself, or I put a symbol on it, and that symbol corresponds with the legend at the bottom of the document. These uh, references include things such as the 2014 LDS New Testament Study Manual for Religion 2.11 and 2.12. It includes the Doctrinal New Testament Commentary, Volume 3, by uh, Bruce R. McConkie. Includes understanding the book of Revelation, coming from a great article from the October 1983 Ensign, uh, various general conference addresses, and other Ensign and other church pu publications. Now, if you're sick of listening to me, I'm going to give you the link now uh, to the download this book of Revelation study guide, but the video will continue. But the rest of the video will cover my approach to making it and a great article by Bruce R. McConkie on how we can best understand the book of Revelation. It also includes a very interesting guide I developed uh, illustrating how the book of Revelation compares to all other accounts uh, of the plan of salvation in Scripture. You will want to see that. My goal here is that this study guide with this approach will amplify your understanding of the book of Revelation tenfold. Here is the link if you don't want to continue with the video. It's gospeldoctrine.us, not .com, slash revelation.pdf. Be sure to use a capital R on Revelation. Now let's go ahead and, and continue. As I said, I'm showing um, the, the study guide here. You can get a sense of all the things that are that are in it. But now let's start talking about um, why I put this together and how you can get the most out of it. So there was a great um, article in the 1975 um, September issue of the Ensign called Understanding the Book of Revelation that Bruce R. McConkie wrote. It is an amazing article and I highly recommend you read it. But this video is gonna go through many of the quotes that came from this article and the tips and, and things that he recommends to understand this amazing book. So the first quote from this, uh, th this talk says, before we can understand this book, we must have one thing clearly lodged in our mind. It is a book of Holy Scripture. It is the mind and will and voice of the Lord. And it came by revelation. The Lord spake and his servant heard, and the word was written. And we now have the written record for our profit and blessing. He then goes on to say, if you have already fallen in love with John's presentation of the plan of salvation, 
as it is set out in the apocalypse, you are one of the favored few in the church. If this choice experience is yet ahead of you, the day and hour is here to launch one of the most intriguing and rewarding studies in gospel scholarship in which any of us can engage. The real joys of gospel learning will come to us when we begin to drink from the fountain of truth, as here recorded by the ancient revelator. In my judgment, the Gospel of John ranks far ahead of those of Matthew, Mark, or Luke. At least John's record of the life of our Lord is directed to the saints. It deals more fully with those things that interest people who have received the gift of the Holy Ghost and who have the hope of eternal life. But even ahead of this Gospel account stands the wondrous work, the book of Revelation. Notice several things that Bruce R. McConkie said right there. First of all, he called this John's vision of the plan of salvation. Think about that. If you read the book of Revelation in the context of it being a record of, a, of the plan of salvation, you're going to get a lot more out of it, at least I did. Also, look at what Bruce says about that as, as well. It, this, in his mind, ranked far higher than Matthew, Mark, Luke, and even John's account of uh, the time that they had with the Lord. So now look at this. I put this together, and while many prophets anciently saw and wrote about the plan of salvation and even described what would happen during these various periods of Earth's history, only John in the book of Revelation covers the entire expanse of the Earth's history and even the pre-mortal existence and what happens after. Isn't it interesting that while many other prophets, including Nephi, Jacob, brother of Jared, Mormon, Moroni, and many others saw the beginning to the end, they were forbidden from writing it. Only John was allowed to write it for us. So the way John wrote it is exactly how the Lord wanted us to read it. So are we really expected to understand the book of Revelation? It seems so hard. Well, Bruce R. McConkie says yes to that. In fact, he says, certainly, why else did the Lord reveal it? The common notion that it deals with beasts and plagues and mysterious symbolism that cannot be understood is just not true. It is so far overstated that it gives an entirely erroneous feeling about this portion of revealed truth. Most of the book, and it is no problem to count the verses so included, is clear and plain and should be understood by the Lord's people. Certain parts are not clear and are not understood by us which, however, does not mean that we could not understand them if we would grow in faith as we should. The Lord expects us to seek wisdom, to ponder his revealed truths, and to gain a knowledge of them by the power of his Spirit. Otherwise, he would not have revealed them to us. He has withheld the sealed portion of the Book of Mormon from us because it is beyond our present ability to comprehend. We have not made that spiritual progression which qualifies us to understand its doctrines, but he has not withheld the book of Revelation because it is not beyond our capacity to comprehend. If we apply ourselves with full purpose in heart, we can catch the vision of what the ancient revelator recorded. The apostles in Palestine did not know about the Nephites because they did not seek such knowledge. We would have many additional revelations and no many added truths if we use the faith that is in our power to exercise. What then of the beasts and the plagues and all these hard portions of the book of Revelation? What are we supposed to do with all of that then? Well, Bruce answers that. He says, an answer to this question gives rise to an interesting point. It is our observation that those who concern themselves about these hidden and mysterious things, generally speaking, are the ones who have not yet come to an understanding of the many plain and clear doctrines found in this and all other books of Scripture. What does he mean by this? I'm, well, I believe he's saying that the book of Revelation is kind of like a litmus test of your understanding of doctrine and your level of spirituality. Let's go on to another quote from this uh, article. It says, but why this particular book? What does it add to the reservoir of revealed truth which is not found elsewhere? In the answer to these queries, we find the real genius of John's apocalyptic writing. Gospel truths are and should be variously worded, variously described, and variously adorned with literary attraction to all the end that they will appeal in one form or another to every heart that can be touched. 
the book of Revelation takes an approach to the plan of salvation that is found nowhere else in all of inspired writings. The language and imagery is so chosen as to appeal to the maturing gospel scholar, to those who already love the Lord and have some knowledge of his goodness and grace. I believe he's saying there that this can be a stepping stone, if you will, to those and for those who are truly trying to understand the scriptures and a test for those who are ready for a more revealed truth. Developing a spiritual encryption key, if you will, that takes you to another level of gospel understanding. After the baptism of water, after being born of the Spirit, after charting a course of conformity and obedience, the true saint is still faced with the need to overcome the world. Nowhere in any scripture now had among men are there such pointed and persuasive explanations as to why we must overcome the world and the attendant blessings that flow therefrom as in this work of the beloved John. As the saints pursue the course of progression and perfection, they look for a better world. Amid the evils and downdrafts of this life, they have a need to look upward and ahead, to look at the overall course ordained by their creator. They need to think in terms of millennial and celestial rewards. As the saints pursue the course of progression and perfection, they look for a better world. Amid the evils and downdrafts of this life, they have a need to look upward and ahead, to look at the overall course ordained by their creator. They need to think in terms of millennial and celestial rewards. Where is all of this set forth so effectively as in the later part of these writings of John? Nowhere else do we find the detailed data relative to the plagues and scourges of a sick and dying world. Nowhere is the overthrow of satanic power so piteously described. Truly, the teachings of this inspired work are some of the greatest incentives to personal righteousness now found in Holy Writ. Has not the day come when the maturing gospel scholar can dig into this great treasury of revealed truths and come up with a knowledge of those things that will assure him of peace and joy in this life and eternal life in the worlds to come? You know, he then goes on to give an approach to reading and understanding the book of Revelations from, from this article. He gives some very specific steps, which I want to go through here. Number one, know that the book of Revelation deals with things that are to occur after the New Testament times, particularly in the last days. John saw only that which was lying in futurity and which was shortly to come to pass. Also, Joseph Smith said, John had the curtains of heaven withdrawn and by vision looking through the dark vistas of future ages and contemplated events that should transpire throughout every subsequent period of time until the final winding up scene. Number two, have an overall knowledge of the plan of salvation and the nature of God's dealings with men on earth. He's saying this like it's a prerequisite, a requirement to better understand it. We find in the book either passing allusions, brief commentary, or fairly extended considerations of such doctrines as pre-existence and the war in heaven, the creation of the earth, the Lord's dealings with men in successive dispensations, our Lord's atonement and glorious resurrection, what is required to overcome the world and gain exaltation, the gross darkness of the apostasy which followed the New Testament times, the setting up of the church of the devil and the reign of the antichrists, the restoration of the gospel and the latter-day gathering of Israel, concourses of plagues and desolations to be poured out in the last days, final destruction of the great and abominable church, the second coming and millennial reign, resurrection and eternal judgment, and final celestialization of the earth. These are but a part of the great events described and the doctrines taught perfect their understanding. Manifestly, those who already know the prophetic mind relative to such things will be able to focus the added light found in the book of Revelation on them and thus perfect their understanding of the Lord's doings. Number three, use various Latter-day Revelations which expand upon the same subjects in very similar language. You'll find some of these in sections 45, 76, 77, 88, 101, and even Ether 13. Number four, study the sermons of Joseph Smith relative to the book of Revelation. Number five, use the inspired version of the Bible. Mine has been absolutely invaluable to me. In that same article, it says, 
Acting by the spirit of prophecy and revelation, Joseph Smith corrected portions, but not all, of what was amiss in the King James Version of the Bible. In the book of Revelation, corrections, for instance, the angels of the various earthly churches became the servants, presiding officers, of those units. The lamb with seven horns and seven eyes became a lamb with twelve eyes and twelve horns, thus perfecting the symbolism to identify Christ and his apostles. Chapter 12 is also revised as to identify the woman as the church of God and the child as she brought forth as the kingdom of our God and his Christ and so forth. By the way, it was that very paragraph that inspired me to build that study guide that uh, hopefully you have already downloaded or you're about to download. Number six, reserve judgment on those things which have no interpretation given. In other words, avoid rabbit holes, be careful, follow good LDS sources, and beware of the internet. I see so many people within and outside of the church finding what they think is a foothold on some interpretation of something in the scriptures, and then they create these elaborate narratives and calculations as to when the millennium will start or when the second coming is going to be here, etc. If it hasn't been revealed by a modern day prophet, it is just someone's opinion. Now, again, that's those six steps, I think, are, are great to help us understand the book of Revelation. Um, here, again, is the link to the study guide that I put together. Again, it's gospeldoctrine.us, not .com, .us, forward slash, revelation.pdf. Remember to use a capital R on Revelation. Thanks for watching, and remember, if you like this video, please subscribe. YouTube's algorithm, um, if the more people that subscribe and like the video, it then puts it in front of other people that have similar likes and interests. So if you found this to be valuable, please like and subscribe and share it with others. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much.